Welcome back. All right. So I haven't had a reason to. There you go. Zero sugar cherry. All right. Uh, before anybody asks what I'm drinking. So last night I watched the the Power of the Doctor, which is the latest Doctor Who episode. I have um, I I've lost my my mojo when it comes to Doctor Who. So back before I had the Hockey Channel, um, initially I would do reviews every week for Doctor Who episodes. This was during the Peter Capaldi era. Um, I am one of the few at least seemingly few that really enjoyed a lot of the Peter Capaldi era. I thought he did really, really well as the Doctor. Some of the stories were, sleep in your eye becomes sentient, whatever. Some of the stories were not great, but man, some of those episodes were hit right out of the park. The episode that's just him and he's in the house by himself, and it's just, oh, there's just so much. Then there's the, um, the episode which is just, you know, are you afraid of the dark? Why would the doctor be afraid of the dark? And you never see it. You never see what he's afraid of. And that's what made that episode so good, was that it just left it in your imagination. It was terrifying. Uh, the Chibnall era has not had that for me. I watched most of the first series, um, and it, it alienated me. There was too many companions. There was too much... It, it, there were too many really heavy-handed heavy -handed messages to the show. Which can be fine if it suits the show, but for Doctor Who, it was too much. So, while Jodie Whittaker is a fantastic actress, I really do enjoy most of what I've seen her in, and I, I'm a fan of, of Jodie Whittaker. The, the Chibnall episodes were just no. And then, you know, the Flux came out, and I thought, okay, it's the final series, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I, I watched the first episode of Flux, and it was just, it was the same thing. There's a million different things happening at once. Before you get acquainted with what's happening in one location, you're whisked off to the next, and then you're off to the next. And then, and you just you just kind of, at least for me, my eyes glass over, and I'm like, I, I don't care. I, I do not care. And so last night's episode had a lot of those elements as well. You've got the master, who's Rasputin. Never really explained why. Uh, he starts showing up in famous paintings again. Never, never explained why. So I don't feel like I'm telling you spoilers since they never tell you why. Uh, there's there's no explanation for any of it. Um, and then there's a point in the show where she has him imprisoned, and I, I it just this is what drives me insane is that you have. More than almost it's 60 years next year, right? 60th anniversary. You have almost 60 years of Doctor Who history and lore to build on. And the Doctor would never have assumed, okay, we've got the Master all locked up. We can go do something else now. No, you can't. Uh, she would have kept him chained to her. She would have kept him in in some kind of a trap that i'm sure that over the thousands of years of existence she could have thought of something to ensnare him but leaving him with unit and especially he's like oh no don't take me to unit it's like and then she did because i thought okay now she won't take him to unit because he just totally telegraphed what he's gonna do. oh no she she took him to unit and i i i found myself thinking okay i i just have to make it to the end of this and it, it turns into a slog. Now, the other thing that hurt for me was, because I'm watching the CBC feed of it, um, they have so many commercials piled into it that it takes an episode that's a little over an hour long, I do believe, and made it two hours. So that's part of the reason I PVR'd it and watched it later also because there were hockey games on that I had to watch. But it, it's just every episode from Chris Chibnall, it's, there's, there might be some good ideas in there, but there's so much crap going on at the same time. You've got Daleks, you've got Cybermen, you've got the Master, and they're all at cross purposes. And you've got this weird storyline with a rogue Dalek that goes nowhere. And this made me mad. So, I will show you guys. Okay. So, this Dalek Exterminator's jersey. I got Rusty, number one, put on the back because of a 12th Doctor episode where there's a mal malfunctioning Dalek that wants to destroy all the Daleks. Doesn't want to destroy humans. And they get into it, and, and Rusty ends up going a little bit into the evil Dalek again, but, he, but it's fixed again, and so Rusty's not evil. 
So last night when there's a rogue Dalek and it's like, you know, I want to destroy them. And the doctor says, no, I've never heard that before. I'm yelling at the TV. You have. You abs We've forgotten Rusty. Cool. One thing that drives me nuts is when the show completely ignores previous episodes and previous arcs, previous storylines, and just throws them away. And again, if you're the showrunner for Doctor Who, you should know the lore of Doctor Who. And the fact that they, they made it so that the Doctor's not a Time Lord anymore. And and the the plot lines didn't really go anywhere. Like, the, the villains, and I, I have a hard time taking Cybermen seriously because they've been defeated so many times. Daleks, kind of the same thing too. But it just, it just made it such a slog to get through. Thankfully at the end, spoiler alert, we get the regeneration, David Tennant's there, and it's fantastic. Absolutely, totally fantastic. I cannot wait to see what happens with David Tennant as the Doctor again. Although, we know he's not going to last. We know that they're building up to the 15th Doctor. But I think Russell T. Davies, this is a good idea. Bring the show back to its its roots, the reboot roots, right? Which is Russell T. Davies, his, his area of expertise. And then bring in something new. So bring in David Tennant. And this is how I say it. Bring in David Tennant and Catherine Tate. You have the Doctor and Donna. And then bring in somebody new after bringing your audience back showing them see it's back to being a good show and i assume there'll only be one maybe two different plot lines going on at a time rather than it seemed like 80. i i don't know why tegan was there i don't know what point tegan served i and she fell to her death but she was fine i i don't know <laughs> like she she free falls down a court like down a, a, a and just Right? She's dead. So, like, the ghost of Tegan ends up, and then there's an arm for, like, Cybermen, but she can fight it. I, I, oh my gosh. I just don't. See, if I think too much about it, I'm going to give myself a headache. And I got hockey games starting in, like, ten minutes. So, i got to be ready for that. But it just, there were so many things going on that I was like, that's stupid, and that's stupid, and that doesn't make sense. And that doesn't, why would that happen? Why did that happen? How did that happen? Why did... So they have all these really cool cameos of former doctors and former companions. And while the former doctor showing up was fun, I, I still don't know why Tegan was there. And I don't understand the the Russian nesting doll comment too with Cybermen. I was like, huh? And why? And it really inspired feelings of, huh? So I'm I'm glad the Chibnallier is done. <laughs> I am so happy the Chibnallier is done, and I will start recording Doctor Who again. I felt really good to go into my PVR, pick Doctor Who, and say record series. Now it does usually go on demand right away after, but I want to make sure I can watch it same day, which the on demand section doesn't usually uh, update that quickly. Oh Shadow, I gotta pick now, huh? I guess. I love the cat, but he's. He's not very smart sometimes. He's getting really close to Pixel, too. This could get ugly. Anyways, uh, but that made sense. That's one storyline. It's two cats. If if only we had something that simple on last night's Doctor Who. Am I alone? Uh, the ratings would tell me I'm not. The ratings dropped to record lows uh, under Jodie Whittaker's uh, run. And it's too bad because, again, Jodie Whittaker's fantastic. Um, I, I thought the casting was really brilliant. That she wasn't old. She wasn't overly young. Um, she wasn't attractive to a point where people were like, well, see, they're just trying to bring in the youngins because, you know, she's good looking. But she, she, she did, she's, she's different. You, she had the doctor feel to her and it's just, it's too bad how that worked out. All right. Anyways, let me know what you thought of the episode. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video and hey, the Chibnall era is done. Uh, now we, now we move on and we don't have to speak of it again. And I can go back to adding to my collection. This is all Doctor Who. This is all classic Doctor Who. So this is 6th Doctor, 4th Doctor, 5th Doctor, 7th Doctor. Um, these are all Dalek episodes. Any episode uh, that has the Daleks in them I tried to get. Minus the one where they're robots. Because uh, they're, they're not robots. Douglas Adams wrote it and I love Douglas Adams. But he was wrong to make them robots. And then you've got uh, the Doctors Revisited. All Doctor Who all the way over here. And then you have Phantasm. Because I had to put something in and it's phantasm ends up in that role but that's that's all doctor who 
and I don't have anything of Whitaker's Doctor, and I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not going to. But I have every episode Matt Smith, David Tennant, uh, and of course Chris Eccleston. And, and I'd like to see Eccleston, I'd really like to see Eccleston come back and do something. Uh, do some kind of cameo something and have better closure. I was, the one moment I really liked last night, Paul McGann. Paul McGann being in that episode warmed my heart because his doctor was in a really crappy movie and then wasn't in the reboot. And I think that Paul McGann deserves something, something in the Doctor Who universe. And I hope that does in fact happen. But let me know your thoughts on that as well. Uh, we all love Paul McGann as the Doctor, right? Right? I did. All right. Uh, even though the TV movie's terrible, he's fantastic. But there you go. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. Don't forget those like and subscribe buttons. I'll talk to you again soon.